This is a CMA Administrative Knowledge Practice Test. This test consists of 50 questions designed to help you prepare for your Administrative Knowledge section of the Medical Assistant Certification Exam. Each question includes an explanation of the correct answer. So you can understand the reasoning behind it. Let's get started. 1. The practice of one insurance company working with other insurance plans to determine the amount each will pay when a patient has more than one insurance plan is referred to as A. Capitation B. Coinsurance C. Third-party payment D. Assignment of benefits E. Coordination of benefits Correct answer, E. Coordination of benefits Coordination of benefits is undertaken when the patient has more than one insurance plan, after the primary carrier has made payment based on its plan, the secondary carrier determines its own amount of payment based on the balance. Capitation A means that the insurance carrier pays a set fee per patient regardless of degree of injury or illness. Coinsurance B requires the insured patient to pay for portion of a medical bill, while the insurance carrier pays the remainder. A third-party payment, C, is one made by an insurance carrier, government-funded program, or other payer that is not the patient. In assignment of benefits, D, a patient authorizes the health insurance carrier to make payment for a covered procedure directly to the health care provider rather than to the patient themselves. 2. Recording financial transactions in a bookkeeping or accounting system is called A. Ledger keeping B. Super billing. C. Posting. D. Preparing the trial balance. E. Deducting. Correct answer. C. Posting. Posting is the process of copying or recording an amount from one record, such as a journal, onto another record, such as a ledger or from a day sheet onto a ledger card. A ledger, A, is a record of charges, payments, and adjustments for individual patients or families. A super bill, B, is a combination charge slip, statement, and insurance reporting form. Preparing a trial balance, D, is a method of checking the accuracy of accounts. It should be done once a month. Deducting, E, refers to when money is subtracted or deducted from an employee pay to cover taxes, insurance, and possible other expenses. 3. Which appointment scheduling technique determines the number of patients to be seen each hour by dividing the hour by the length of the average visit? A. Double booking. B. Cluster. C. Time specified. D. Wave. E. Advance. Correct answer, D, WAVE. The goal of using WAVE scheduling is to keep the office on track. To determine how many patients to be seen in an hour, divide the hour by the length of the average visit. For which of the following filing steps includes ensuring that the appropriate people have taken action on a document before filing it? A, releasing. B, indexing. C, conditioning. D. Storing. E. Sorting. Correct answer, F. Releasing. Inspecting and releasing means ensuring that the appropriate people have taken action on a document. Before the document is filed, a release mark should be noted on it. 5. Another name for a reminder file is a slashin. A. Tickler file. B. Supplemental file. C. Retained file. D. Inactive file. E. Active file. Correct answer, A. Tickler file. Tickler file and a reminder file are two names for the file that holds work that has to be completed. A supplemental file, B, is a file that holds papers that are needed in addition to main papers. A retained file, C, may be a file that retains or holds specific information. An inactive file, D, holds paperwork from patients that are no longer part of the medical practice. An active file, E, may hold information on patients that are currently using the medical office. 6. Which of the following is not a true statement about the health information technology for economic and clinical health, high-tech, 
Act of 2009. A. The Act establishes financial incentives for adoption of electronic health records, EHRs. B. The Act establishes a single EHR software system that all healthcare providers must use. C. Healthcare providers must show meaningful use of EHR systems to receive incentive payments. D. A goal of using EHRs is to improve Americans' health. E. More than half of U.S. physicians have adopted EHRs. Correct answer. B. The Act establishes a single EHR software system that all healthcare providers must use. The High Tech Act of 2009 does not dictate any single electronic health record, EHR, software system, and many software and hardware vendors have entered the market for EHRs. The Act establishes financial incentives for EHR adoption, a. To promote the goal of improving Americans' health, d. And it requires healthcare providers to demonstrate meaningful use of EHRs, c. As of 2019, 90% of U.S. physicians had adopted an EHR system, e. 7. The portion of salary held back from payroll checks for paying government taxes is known as the a. W. 4 form. B. Federal Unemployment Tax Act. C. Withholding. D. Annual Tax Return. E. FICA. Correct answer. C. Withholding. Withholding is the amount of salary held out of payroll checks for the purpose of paying government taxes or for employees' benefits. To determine the amount of money to be withheld from each paycheck, each new employee must complete a W. 4. A. The Federal Unemployment Tax Act, B, requires employers to pay a percentage of each employee's income, up to a specified dollar amount, to fund an account used to pay employees who have been laid off. All employees file an annual tax return, D. FICA, E, governs the Social Security system. 8. In a letter written in block format, the salutation is followed by A. A, comma. B, dash. C, colon. D, period. E, semicolon. Correct answer, C, colon. In block format the salutation is followed by a colon. 9. Which of the following concerns have providers raised about the use of EHRs and the required data entry they must complete? A. It is impersonal. B. It interferes with communication with the patient during an encounter. C. It is busy work. D. They prefer handwritten notes. E. Electronic records are confusing. Correct answer. B. It interferes with communication with the patient during an encounter. A common concern among clinical providers is that the simultaneous entry of patient information during an examination places a barrier between themselves and the patient. Often the computer station is across the room from the exam table and the clinician has their back turned to the patient as they are talking. While some clinicians do not like keyboarding aspects the communication issue is the most common issue being raised. 10. The dimensions of the envelope most frequently used in office correspondence are a. 4 inches times 9 inches b. 3 and a half inches times 8 and a half inches c. 4 and a half inches times 9 and a half inches d. 5 and a half inches times 9 and a half inches e. 10 and a half inches times 10 and a half inches Correct answer, c. The standard size business envelope is number 10, which is 4 and a half inches by 9 and a half inches. 11. Account aging receivable. A. Means that the physician must collect the receivable on time. B. Is not necessary in a single physician office. C. Is a tool to show the status of each account. D. Involves writing off accounts that are over one year past due. E. Involves writing off accounts that are over five years past due. Correct answer, C. Is a tool to show the status of each account. Account aging is the method of identifying how long an account is overdue. Collecting the receivable on time, A. 
is the best way to keep accounts accurate but this is not always feasible. Account aging is necessary in all physician offices regardless of size, b. Account aging shows how the account is aging, it does not allow the account to be written off, d and e. 12. A system used in emergency centers but not used in private practices is a. Modified wave scheduling b. Double booking scheduling c. Open hours scheduling d. Cluster scheduling e. Time specified scheduling Correct answer c. Open hours scheduling Open hours scheduling is when patients come at their own convenience. Modified wave A can be used in different ways. One way is to schedule in 15-minute slots, regardless of appointment type. Double booking B is used when two patients are scheduled at the same time. Cluster scheduling D groups similar appointments together during the day. Time-specified scheduling E assumes a steady stream of patients all day long. 13. Appointments that are anticipated to require more time should be scheduled. A. At the beginning of the hour. B. Never. C. At the end of the hour. D. With another patient's 10-minute time slot. E. During a 10-minute slot. Correct answer. A. At the beginning of the hour. Scheduling these appointments at the beginning of the hour will allow time for catching up. Never scheduling a longer appointment, B, is not realistic. Initial appointments, those requiring complete history and physical exam, and some medical procedures take more time. Scheduling these appointments at the end of the hour, C, will not allow the doctor to catch up. Scheduling an appointment at the same time as another patient's 10-minute slot, D, will not give the time needed for the appointment. 10-minute appointments, E, would be used for follow-up care. 14. For a tickler file to work effectively, it must be a. Kept in file folders b. Located in a secure area c. Checked frequently d. Organized into weekly files e. Kept in a separate area of the office Correct answer, c. Checked frequently for the tickler file to be most effective, it has to be checked frequently, so all paperwork is quickly put in patient's charts. A tickler file is kept in a folder, but it still has to be checked frequently. If the tickler file is locked in a secure area, B, it may not get checked as needed. Tickler files should be cleaned out every week, not left in weekly files, D. Keeping the tickler file in a separate area of the office, E, may cause it to be overlooked. 15. When requesting payment from a patient who arrives at check-in for an office visit, which of the following statements would be most appropriate? A. You have a co-payment of $30, and we can talk about that when you check out. B. You have a co-payment of $30. Would you like to send that in? C. You have a co-payment of $30. How would you like to pay that? D. Do you know if you have a copayment? E. Your doctor will tell you how much you owe during the visit. Correct answer. C. You have a copayment of $30. How would you like to pay that? Under managed care, in which a copayment is part of the plan, patients are expected to pay at each visit. By collecting payment before the provider sees the patient, the medical office enhances its ability to collect the expected copayment. Asking the patient how they want to pay, C, implies that payment is expected now. Deferring payment to checkout time, A, and asking the patient for information, D, suggest that payment is not expected now, these practices are not encouraged. Suggesting that the patient send in the payment, B, conveys the idea that it is the patient's choice to pay or not pay. It is not the provider's job to tell a patient how much they owe, E. 16. Which of the following activities should be integrated in an effective electronic management system? A. Patient scheduling of appointments. B. Patient billing. C. Inventory use of supplies. 
D. Medical and procedural coding. E. All of the above. Correct answer, E. All of the above. All aspects of the flow and provision of care in a practice office or healthcare setting will be part of a well-integrated electronic management system. This includes not only the clinical systems but billing and scheduling aspects as well. 17. A spreadsheet is a type of If. Worksheet B. Hardware C. Patient list D. Cover letter E. Work grid Correct answer, a eh? worksheet. A spreadsheet is a worksheet that is used to see many types of information at once. Hardware, B, refers to a computer's physical components. A patient list, C, is created by the medical office. A cover letter, D, is used to send to introduce you or the medical office to the reader. A work grid, E, shows what time employees are in. 18. First-class mail is classified as a. Business mail only b. Newspapers only c. Items weighing 13 ounces or more d. Items weighing 13 ounces or less e. All bulk mail Correct answer, d. Items weighing 13 ounces or less the U.S. Postal Service defines first-class mail as all items weighing 13 ounces or less. 19. In written communication, the most important issue to take into consideration is a. Lack of body language b. The speed of the document transmitted c. Formatting d. Legal and ethical issues e. Grammar Correct answer D. Legal and ethical issues. Written communication, such as letters, memos, and email, must take into consideration legal and ethical issues. Body language, A, is useful when speaking directly to someone, but cannot be viewed in written communication. The speed of the document, B, has no bearing on the written communication. Formatting, C, is important in written communication but is not as important as legal and ethical issues. Grammar, E, is important in written communication, but is not as important as legal and ethical issues. 20. Which of the following does not refer to a managed care organizational model? A. Integrated delivery system. B. Health maintenance organization. C. Preferred provider organization. D. Double entry system. E. Utilization Review Organization Correct answer, D. Double Entry System A double entry system is a bookkeeping system. When the practice charges for a medical service, the patient's account is debited and the appropriate account for the practice is credited. All the other options are commonly used models for managed care organizations. 21. The federal government offered incentives to support what aspect of implementation of electronic health records, EHRs? A. System selection among vendors. B. Planning for EHR implementation. C. Staffing and staff training. D. Cost of purchase or lease of a system. E. Patient use of a system. Correct answer. D. Cost of purchase or lease of a system. The federal government implemented a meaningful use program that reimbursed medical offices for some costs related to implementation of EHRs. 22. Which of the following represents an important way to maintain the security and integrity of an EHR? A. A password secured sign on credential for each user in a facility. B. Limited access to anyone but the physician providers. C. Single sign-on credentials for the practice office team. D. Keeping the data entry device or computer out of sight of patients. E. None of the above. Correct answer. A. A password secured sign-on credential for each user in a facility. A key strategy to secure a computer network is the use of password-protected logons. In this way, only approved staff members can access health records in a particular lockaton. A single sign-on, C, could be used by any individual, 
it would defeat the purpose of the system to only allow access to physician providers, b, and it would be a logistical problem to keep the computer station out of the patient care and office areas of the facility, d. 23. When revising the policies and procedures manual, the medical assistant needs to first a. Talk to fellow employees. b. Chose a color for the manual. c. Decide on a format. d. Buy paper for the manual. e. Talk to the healthcare provider. Correct answer, e. Talk to the healthcare provider. Always consult the healthcare provider when determining the policy and procedures of an office. Talking to fellow employees, a will not determine what the provider wants for the office. Choosing a color of the manual, B, would not be the first step in preparing the manual. Deciding on the format, C, can be done after the wishes of the provider are established. Buying paper for the manual, D, would not be the first step. 24. Leaving large and used gaps in the physician's schedule is A. Underbooking B. Overbooking. C. Clustering. D. Wave. E. Advance. Correct answer, A. Underbooking. Leaving gaps in a doctor's schedule will cause the doctor and staff to have excess time that could be used for patients. Overbooking, B. Occurs when more patients are scheduled than open appointment slots. Clustering, C. Is grouping similar appointments together during the day. Wave scheduling, D, is scheduling a set number of patients per hour, all of whom will arrive at the top of the hour. Advanced scheduling, E, is scheduling appointments weeks or months in advance. 25. The correct order of filing units for Anise K. Strong Morse, Mrs. Adam H. Morse, is A. Anise K. Strong Morse B. Strong Morse, Anise K. C. Morse, Mrs. Adam H. D. Morse, Anise, Strong. E. Strong, Mrs. Adam H. Correct answer, B. Strong Morse, Anise K. In the alphabetical filing system, the patient's last name is Unit 1, first name is Unit 2, and middle name, or initial, is Unit 3. Hyphenated names are treated as one unit. 26. What should the medical assistant do if a patient misses an appointment? A. Document the no-show in the patient's chart. B. Notify the patient that they will be charged for the appointment. C. Refuse to reschedule an appointment for the patient. D. Schedule another appointment for the patient but patient must confirm. E. Erase the appointment from the appointment book. Correct answer. A. Document the no-show in the patient's chart. Documenting the no-show information is necessary because the medical chart, whether in hard copy or electronic format, is a legal document. This information is important for the health of the patient. Doctor's offices can request payment for missed appointments, but patients should be notified of this practice when they first become a patient. B. Refusing to reschedule an appointment is not good customer relations. C. Rescheduling is a good idea while the patient is on the phone, but telling the patient that they have to confirm is not good customer relations. D. Erasing an appointment is not an option. E. The appointment record must be treated as a legal document. 27. Referrals to outside physicians or specialists must be entered into the A. Appointment calendar. B. Data entry. C. Medical records. D. Claim report. E. Tickler file. Correct answer. C. Medical records. Documentation of a referral has to go into a patient's medical chart. 28. Which of the following is a trial balance? A. A daily summary. B. A way of checking the accuracy of accounts. C. An accounting system. D. Accrual accounting. E. Bookkeeping. Correct answer. B. A way of checking the accuracy of accounts. Trial balance is a method used to check the accuracy of accounts. A daily summary. A. 
is used to record charges and payments in the physician's office. An accounting system, C, is used to record, classify, and summarize financial transactions. Accrual accounting, D, is recording income when it is earned and expenses when they are incurred. Bookkeeping, E, is the recording of the accounting processes. Bookkeeping records income, charges, and disbursements. 29. A new patient must provide all of the following information except F. Social security number B. Income C. Marital status D. Occupation E. Age Correct answer, B. Income A new patient does not need to provide information regarding income. All of the other information is required. 30. For a medical office to run smoothly, each employee must A. Help write the policies and procedures manual. B. Know where the policies and procedures manual is kept. C. Read the policies and procedures manual. D. Give patients copies of the policies and procedures manual. E. Have a personal copy of the policies and procedures manual. Correct answer, C. Read the policies and procedures manual. For the office to run smoothly, all employees must read the policy and procedures manual. All employees can help write the manual, A, but all old and new employees must read the manual. Knowing where the manual is kept is a great idea, B, but it needs to be read also. It is not necessary to give patients a copy of the manual, D. It is not necessary for each employee to have a personal copy of the manual, E. 31. Which insurance carriers would the medical assistant enter into the database? A. All insurance carriers. B. Each insurance carrier that the physician accepts. C. Medicare and Medicaid only. D. The most popular insurance carriers. E. The carrier offered to medical office employees. Correct answer, B, each insurance carrier that the physician accepts. Physicians do not accept all insurance. The database would contain the names of the insurance that the physician accepts. Since the physician usually does not accept all insurance, all insurance would not be listed, A. The database would contain all the insurance that physician accepts, not just Medicare and Medicaid, C. Only the insurance carriers that the physician accepts would be entered, not the most popular ones, D. The insurance carrier offered to medical office employees, E, would not be entered into the patient database. 32. Checks and cash from a medical practice should be deposited in the bank. A. Daily. B. Bi-weekly. C. Weekly. D. Monthly. E. Semi-monthly. Correct answer, A. Eh, daily. All checks and cash should be deposited on a daily basis so that no money is lying around the office. It is easier to keep track of the money in a bank account. 33. The type of scheduling where patients arrive at their own convenience is. A. Open hours. B. Time specified. C. Wave. D. Double booking. E. Clustering. Correct answer, A. Open hours. Open hour scheduling is the system in which patients arrive at their own convenience with the understanding that they will be seen on a first-come, first-seen basis, unless it is an emergency. 34. Which of the following is not a true statement about workers' compensation? A. A qualifying illness or injury originates on the job. B. An illness or injury unrelated to one's job cannot be seen under workers' compensation insurance. C. Short-term, long-term, or permanent disability benefits may apply. D. The individual with a qualifying illness or injury can go to the doctor of their choice. E. The individual with a qualifying illness or injury receives no bills for medical expenses specifically related to the illness or injury. Correct answer. D. The individual with a qualifying illness or injury can go to the doctor of their choice. The individual cannot choose which doctor they go to. When a report is made to the employer, 
the employer directs the individual where to go for treatment. This may or may not be the individual's primary care physician. The other four choices, A, B, C, and E, are true statements about workers' compensation. 35. SOAP refers to A. A method of documentation used in medical records. B. A filing system used in medical offices. C. A procedure for making medical appointments. D. A protocol for answering patient phone calls. E. A bookkeeping system used in medical offices. Correct answer. A. A method of documentation used in medical records. SOAP is a standard method of documentation used in medical records. It stands for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. 36. When transcribing material from recorded dictation, what should the medical assistant do if a word is unclear? A. Leave a blank space and write a note to the provider. B. Guess which word the provider intended and insert it. C. Stop transcribing until the provider is available to clarify the word. D. Reword the sentence so the word is no longer needed. E. Mark the space with an X and ask the provider later. Correct answer. A. Leave a blank space and write a note to the provider. When a word is unclear during transcription, leave a blank space and write a note to the physician specifying the location of the space in the document. The medical assistant should never guess while transcribing dictation, b. The medical assistant should continue transcribing the rest of the dictation and wait to ask the physician about the confusing word, c. The medical assistant should never reword sections of dictation without first consulting the physician, d. It is better to leave a blank space rather than an x, d. 37. Cycle billing is a system of billing. A. Completed every fourth month. B. Done by computer. C. Completed by the first of the month. D. In which accounts are divided alphabetically for billing purpose. E. Completed by the 25th of the month. Correct answer. D. In which accounts are divided alphabetically for billing purpose. Using cycle billing, all accounts are divided alphabetically into groups, with each group billed at a different time. No billing cycle is completed every fourth month, A. This can be done by computer, B, but a medical assistant has to go into the computer to divide the bills alphabetically. A monthly billing system is mailed out by the 25th of the month in order to receive payment on the 1st of the month, C and E. 38. When a patient claim is covered by Medicare Part B, Medicare pays what proportion of the allowable charge for physician services? A. 100%. B. 90%. C. 80%. D. 70%. E. 60%. Correct answer. C. 80%. When a patient claim is covered by Medicare Part B, Medicare pays 80% of that amount and the patient pays the remaining 20%. 39. It would be appropriate to send which of the following to a patient via email? A. Diagnosis. B. Lab test results. C. Follow-up information. D. Appointment request. E. List of medications. Correct answer. D. Appointment request. An appointment request is information that can be sent through email. This information is not confidential. Diagnosis A is confidential information and should not be sent by email. Lab test results B also are confidential and cannot be sent by email. Follow-up information C should not be discussed by email. The physician should speak with the patient directly. A list of medications E. Can tell a reader why the patient has seen the physician, so this information is confidential. 40. When scheduling an appointment by telephone, what is the most important step the medical assistant should take before hanging up? A. Ask the caller to repeat the information. B. Ask if the caller requires directions to the medical office. C. Repeat the caller's name and phone number back to the caller. D. Say goodbye. E. Say, 
Thank you. Correct answer. C. Repeat the caller's name and phone number back to the caller. The medical assistant should repeat the patient's name and phone number back to the caller to reduce errors. 41. Which of the following items facilitates communication in the medical office? A. Tickler file. B. Patient's medical records. C. Data entry. D. Appointment book. E. Policies and procedures manual. Correct answer, E. Policies and procedures manual. The policy and procedures manual is the most important communication tool for all employees in a medical office. A tickler file, A, is used to keep track of papers that have to be filed. A patient's medical records, B, are never used as a communication tool. Data entry, C, is used to store raw facts in the doctor's office. The appointment book, D, is used to keep track of appointments. 42. How often should the policy and procedures manual be updated? A. Every month. B. Every six months. C. Every year. D. Every two years. E. Every five years. Correct answer. C. Every year. It is important to update the policies and procedures on a yearly basis. 43. When preparing business correspondence, the first step is to A. Start writing. B. Organize key points to be addressed. C. Select language that is easy to understand. D. Compose a rough draft. E. Choose a letter format. Correct answer. B. Organize key points to be addressed. Organizing the key points before you write up a rough draft will help put your thoughts in order. It allows you to make sure that all the information is included. To just start writing without any thought as to what has to be included, A, will cause you to make many mistakes and will reflect poorly on you. Once you begin writing the rough draft, using language that is easy to understand, C, improves the communication. Anyone reading will know what the subject is. Composing a rough draft, D, would be the next step after organizing your thoughts. Choosing a letter format, E, would be done when you are ready to write. 44. The unethical practice of deliberately coding a patient encounter incorrectly in order to increase reimbursement is called A. Dirty claims B. EOB C. Bundling D. Superbilling E. Upcoding Correct answer, E. Upcoding CPT codes are based on the level of service provided. When the code is manipulated to a higher level, or upcoded, it dishonestly claims a higher level of payment due. Dirty claims, A, are those with mistakes or omissions, they must be corrected and resubmitted to be paid. An EOB, or explanation of benefits, B, is the statement an insurance carrier provides to patients to explain the outcome of medical payment requests. Bundling, C, refers to an insurance carrier's combining two or more CPT codes under one, usually less costly, umbrella code. Superbilling, D, is preparing the patient encounter form, also called a superbill or charge slip. 45. Before scheduling an appointment with a specialist, the medical assistant must A. Obtain an order from the physician for the exact procedure to be performed. B. Talk with the patient to find convenient appointment times. C. Ask the patient if she would rather schedule the appointment. D. Determine the day and time the procedure must be performed. E. Determine who will be with the patient at the time of procedure. Correct answer. A. Obtain an order from the physician for the exact procedure to be performed. For the medical assistant to schedule the proper procedure with the right specialist, they must have the exact procedure to be performed. Though finding out what would be a good time to schedule an appointment for the patient, B, would be helpful, it is not required. The patient could not schedule the appointment themselves, C, as they would not have all the appropriate information. Determining the day and time the procedure must be performed, D, is not necessary. 
Determining who will be with the patient at the time of the procedure before making an appointment is not necessary, e. 46. The process of converting descriptions of diseases, injuries, and procedures into numerical designations is termed a. Coding b. Claims c. Subrogation d. Superbill e. Charge slip Correct answer, a. Coding Coding is the basis for information on the claim form. A claim, b, is a demand for payment. Subrogation, c, is the right of an insurer to collect monies. A superbill, d, is the bill the patient receives from the physician at the time of service delineating the visit, tests, diagnosis, charges, and when to return. A charge slip form, e, is used to record services supplied, and charges and payments for those services, it functions as a billing form for insurance reimbursement. 47. Medicare is a federally funded entitlement insurance program for a. Children of veterans who died of service-related disabilities. b. The blind who are at least 40 years of age. c. Individuals who are financially indigent. d. Anyone over 62 years of age. E. Individuals age 65 and older who are retired and receive Social Security benefits. Correct answer. E. Individuals age 65 and older who are retired and receive Social Security benefits. Individuals age 65 and older who are retired and receive Social Security benefits qualify for Medicare, as do those retired from the railroad or civil service. The minimum age for the general population is 65 not 62, d. Children of veterans who died of service-related disabilities, a. Qualify for medical coverage through the Civilian Health and Medical Program of the Department of Veterans Affairs, CHAMFA. There is no age restriction to Medicare for blind individuals, b. And the finically indigent, c. Are eligible for Medicaid benefits, not Medicare. 48. Which of the following choices describes time-specified scheduling? A. Patients arrive at the top of the hour. B. Appointments are double booked. C. One appointment is made for every hour. D. Patients are scheduled all day long at regular specified intervals. E. Patients are seen on a first-come, first-seen basis. Correct answer. D. Patients are scheduled all day long at regular specified intervals. Time specified is the type of scheduling that is recognized by the regular time intervals in the appointment schedule. 49. All of the following are benefits of using patient portals as personal health records, PHRs, except a. Patients are able to edit medical information. b. Patients can request or make appointments. c. Patients are empowered to take accountability for their health. d. Providers are able to communicate with patients electronically. E. Reminders or alerts may be automatically generated. Correct answer. Patients are able to edit medical information. Patients never have the ability to change medical information that has been documented by a provider. On the other hand, patients are empowered to actively participate in their care by being informed through information available in a portal or PHR. C. They can also request or make appointments, b, and send messages to and receive messages from their provider, d. With electronic documentation and scheduling, reminders are easy to relay through the portal or PHR, e. 50. Which postal class would the medical assistant use to send a monthly newsletter to all patients in the practice? a. First class. b. Second class. C. Third class. D. Bulk mail. E. Priority mail. Correct answer. B. Second class. Authorized newsletters and periodicals ship via second class mail. First class, A. Includes correspondence, billing statements, and other letters weighing 13 ounces or less. Third class, C. Also known as bulk mail, D. Includes books, catalogs, and other printed material weighing less than 16 ounces. Priority mail, e, 
may be used for items weighing more than 13 ounces. It allows them to arrive more quickly. Congratulations! You have completed the test. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more resources.